In the quiet sanctuary of his stoic garden, Marcus Aurelius, renowned for his leadership on the battlefield, found his true refuge. It was here, amidst the tranquil embrace of rustling olive trees and fragrant lavender, that he imparted wisdom only to soldiers seeking military guidance, but to those yearning for a deeper understanding of life. One sweltering afternoon, a young soldier named Caius sought solace in Marcus's presence. Unlike the usual bravado of his peers, Caius wore a mask of concern. General, he began, his voice heavy with uncertainty, I feel adrift. Each campaign feels like grasping at sand, glory seems fleeting, and the weight of command threatens to overwhelm me. Marcus, with his weathered countenance and eyes that held the weight of countless battles, offered a reassuring smile. Caius, he said, your struggle is a familiar one. We all bear burdens, both visible and unseen. But true victory lies not in conquest alone. It lies in mastering oneself. Inviting Caius to sit beside him on a nearby stone, Marcus listened attentively as the young soldier poured out his worries. The fear of failure, the envy of more decorated comrades, the existential doubt gnawing at his soul. With each word, Marcus's gaze remained steady, his demeanor a bastion of calm amidst the storm. When Caius had finished, a profound silence enveloped them. Then Marcus spoke, his voice a steady river of wisdom. Caius, there are aspects of life we can influence, he said, plucking a single lavender sprig and those beyond our control, he presented the fragrant bloom to Caius. This delicate flower cannot command the wines, but it can choose how it sways. With a gesture towards Caius's heart, Marcus continued, the anxieties and envy weighing upon you are like fierce gusts. While you cannot quell their force, you can choose not to be swayed by them. Quietly eliminate these burdens that weaken your spirit. Through the fading light of the day, Marcus elucidated his philosophy. He spoke of the importance of embracing the present moment, of focusing on actions within one sphere of influence, rather than dwelling on the past or fixating on an uncertain future. He cautioned against the folly of comparison, a path leading only to discontent. And above all, he extolled the virtues of courage, temperance, justice and wisdom as the cornerstone of a truly fulfilling existence. As dusk descended upon the garden, Caius rose to depart, a newfound resolve coursing through his veins. The lines of whirring remained etched upon his brow, but they were tempered by a quiet strength. Expressing his gratitude to Marcus, he left the sanctuary not with grand declarations, but with a subtle shift in perspective a collection of stoic principles to navigate the trials ahead. Though he may not control the winds of fate, he knew he held the power to adjust his sails. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by the cacophony of modern life? The constant barrage of information, the relentless pressure to keep up, the persistent anxieties knowing at your peace of mind, you're not alone. Even Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor who weathered plagues, political turmoil, and ceaseless warfare, grappled with similar struggles. Yet, amidst the chaos, he discovered solace in a philosophy, but a stoicism a philosophy reserved for toga-clad emperors, but accessible to anyone seeking a more fulfilling and less stressful existence. In this video, we embark on a journey inspired by Stoic wisdom, delving into ways to quietly eliminate the barriers that hinder our progress. Envision a life where you're not swept away by every passing negativity, where you can step back from the frantic rush and find clarity. Stoicism teaches us to hone in on what truly matters, the present moment, our cherished values, and the aspects of life within our control. Together, we'll uncover practical tools 
to gently yet firmly remove the anxieties, frustrations and unproductive habits cluttering our minds and stealing our peace. It's not about grand gestures or dramatic overhauls, but about subtle shifts in perspective and everyday practices that wield profound influence. Whether it's the incessant pressure to keep up with societal standards, the relentless quest for external validation fueled by social media, or the corrosive grip of negative emotions like anger and resentment, Stoicism presents a pathway to liberation. By identifying and quietly eliminating these inner and outer obstacles, we can nurture a sense of inner strength, resilience and tranquility. So, I invite you to join us on this journey of self-discovery. Let's learn via Stoic stories to know how to quietly shed the burdens that hinder our true potential and rediscover the peace and purpose that reside within us all. 1. Excessive Desire In the annals of Stoic wisdom, there exists a tale that speaks to the timeless struggle of humanity, the tale of Titus, a merchant whose thirst for wealth knew no bounds. Titus, with his keen eye for opportunity and relentless pursuit of profit, amassed great riches through his trade ventures. Yet, despite his material success, he found himself haunted by a profound sense of emptiness that lingered like a shadow upon his soul. Titus's days were consumed by ceaseless striving, his mind ever preoccupied with thoughts of acquisition and expansion. Each new acquisition, each addition to his wealth, offered only fleeting satisfaction before the gnawing hunger returned with renewed intensity. It was as if he were trapped in a labyrinth of desire, forever chasing after a prize that remained forever out of reach. It was during one of his travels that Titus encountered a wise Stoic philosopher, a sage, whose words would forever alter the course of his life. Sensing Titus's inner turmoil, the philosopher offered a simple yet profound insight. Cultivate contentment with what you have, for excessive desire only leads to dissatisfaction. These words struck a chord within Titus's soul, stirring a dormant longing for something beyond the material trappings of wealth. From that moment onward, Titus embarked on a journey of quiet introspection, a journey guided by the principles of Stoicism and the wisdom of the philosopher's words. He began to question the nature of his desires, to discern the difference between genuine needs and frivolous wants. With each passing day, he found himself relinquishing the grip of his material cravings, embracing instead the simple pleasures of life a warm embrace, a shared meal, a quiet moment of contemplation beneath the stars. As Titus delved deeper into the teachings of Stoicism, he came to understand that true wealth lay not in the accumulation of possessions, but in the richness of one's inner life. He learned to quiet the clamor of his desires, to find solace in the stillness of his own being. And in doing so, he discovered a profound sense of liberation of freedom that transcended the limitations of wealth and status. Through the lens of Stoic philosophy, Titus came to see that excessive desire was not merely a personal affliction, but a societal malady a sickness that had infected the hearts and minds of humanity. He witnessed the toll it exacted on individuals and communities alike, breeding discontent, envy and strife. Yet, amidst the chaos, he discerned a glimmer of hope, a quiet revolution taking root in the hearts of those who dared to defy the status quo. Inspired by the teachings of Stoicism, Titus became a beacon of light and a world shrouded in darkness a testament to the transformative power of quiet elimination. And as he shared his journey with others, he became a source of inspiration and guidance, illuminating the path towards a life of true abundance, a life rich in gratitude, purpose and fulfillment. 2. Negative Self-Talk The mirror reflected a woman 
Amelia barely recognized. Her eyes, usually sparkling with mischief, were clouded with doubt. Her shoulders, normally held high with confidence, slumped under the weight of a crushing inner dialogue to loud. It hissed. Not funny enough, they'll all see you for the fraud you are. This relentless internal critic had become a constant companion, chipping away at Amelia's self-esteem with each passing day. The once vibrant life of the party now felt like a forced performance. Laughter tasted like ash in her mouth, and compliments felt like hollow echoes. The joy of simply being Amelia, the woman who loved spontaneous adventures and heartfelt conversations, had vanished. She felt trapped in a cycle of negativity, a suffocating prison built from self-criticism. One evening, amidst the deafening silence of her once joyful apartment, Amelia stumbled upon a dusty self-help book. Its title, The Power of Quiet Elimination, sparked a flicker of curiosity within her. As she delved into its pages, a new perspective emerged. The book spoke of the transformative power of replacing self-criticism with self-compassion. It wasn't about ignoring flaws, but about accepting them with kindness, understanding that they were part of the human experience. The idea was radical, a rebellion against the harsh inner voice that had ruled Amelia's life for so long. Yet, amidst the fear of the unknown, a tiny seed of hope blossomed within her. Could she truly silence the critic and cultivate a kinder inner voice? With a trembling breath, Amelia embarked on a journey of self-discovery. It wasn't easy. The critic, initially stunned into silence, roared back with renewed vigour, but Amelia persisted. She began with small acts of self-compassion, acknowledging her insecurities without judgment. She practiced affirmations, whispering words of encouragement into the mirror each morning. Slowly, a shift began to occur. The suffocating walls of her internal prison started to crumble. Laughter returned, no longer forced, but genuine. The joy of simply being Amelia, flaws and all, began to seep back into her life. The critic's voice, though not entirely silenced, no longer held the same power. Amelia had learned the power of quiet elimination, not of the emotions themselves, but of their ability to control her. She had replaced the deafening roar of self-criticism with the gentle whisper of self-compassion, and in doing so, had rediscovered the woman she was always meant to be. 3. Complaining The office buzzed with a familiar symphony of discontent. Mondays, for Amelia, were synonymous with overflowing inboxes, malfunctioning printers, and colleagues who seemed to specialize in spreading chaos. Today was no exception, as she wrestled with a stubborn paper jam. A litany of complaints bubbled up within her. This printer is useless, she muttered, her voice laced with frustration. Across the aisle, her co-worker, Benjamin, chuckled softly. Sounds like Monday morning blues, he said, a hint of amusement in his eyes. Amelia sighed dramatically. Don't even get me started, she said, launching into a tirade about the printer, the lack of coffee refills, and the never-ending to-do list. As she spoke, a sense of powerlessness washed over her. Complaining seemed to be the only release valve for the daily frustrations, yet it offered no real solutions. Benjamin, ever the calm one, listened patiently until Amelia finished her rant. Then, he spoke in a measured tone. Amelia, he said, you know I hear you, and these things can be annoying, but let's take a step back. What can we actually control in this situation? Amelia blinked, surprised by the shift in perspective. She considered his question. The printer was out of her control, the coffee supplies too, but her reaction, 
that was entirely within her domain. Benjamin continued, maybe we can try restarting the printer together. In the meantime, I have a French press at my desk. You're welcome to some coffee. A hesitant smile tugged at Amelia's lips. This simple act of offering a solution, of focusing on what could be controlled, felt strangely empowering. Together, they tackled the printer jam, the shared effort dissolving some of the frustration. The strong coffee, a welcome boost against the Monday blues, tasted even better with Benjamin's easy camaraderie. Throughout the week, Amelia found herself consciously practicing Benjamin's advice. Instead of dwelling on the traffic, she opted for audiobooks to make the commute productive. When faced with a difficult client, she focused on active listening and problem solving, finding a solution that satisfied both parties. The shift was subtle, a quiet elimination of negativity replaced by a proactive approach. As the weeks turned into months, Amelia noticed a change, just in her work environment, but also within herself. The constant undercurrent of frustration had subsided, replaced by a sense of quiet confidence. She felt empowered to navigate challenges, not by complaining, but by focusing on solutions. One particularly hectic Monday morning, Amelia arrived at the office to find the printer functioning perfectly, a fresh pot of coffee brewing, and a smile on Benjamin's face. Good morning, he said. Ready to take on the day, Amelia grinned. Ready, she replied, a newfound sense of purpose settling in her chest. The printer might malfunction again, the coffee might run out, but one thing was clear, she had the power to choose her response to replace the chorus of complaints with a symphony of proactive solutions. It was a quiet revolution, a small but significant step towards a more fulfilling and empowered life. 4. Comparing yourself to others In the heart of a bustling city, there lived a man named Marcus. He was a stoic soul, finding solace in the simplicity of his own existence amidst the chaos of the world around him. Marcus was keenly aware of the constant temptation to compare himself to others, to measure his worth against the perceived successes of those around him. Yet, he steadfastly refused to succumb to this folly. Instead, he embraced his unique journey and strengths, recognizing that each individual's path in life was inherently different. Marcus found fulfillment in the pursuit of his own growth and development quietly cultivating his skills and nurturing his passions without seeking validation from external sources. While others may have appeared to achieve greater material wealth or societal acclaim, Marcus remained unperturbed, knowing that true contentment could only be found within oneself. He found joy in the simple pleasures of life, a warm cup of tea or a rainy day, the laughter of children playing in the park, the gentle rustle of leaves in the wind. Through his unwavering commitment to his principles, Marcus became a pillar of strength and wisdom in his community. His calm demeanor and steadfast resolve inspired those around him to embrace their own unique paths, free from the shackles of comparison and envy. Marcus shared his insights with anyone who sought his guidance, offering words of encouragement and support to those who struggle to find their way in a world consumed by competition and comparison. Over time, Marcus came to realize that the true measure of a person's worth lay not in their possessions or achievements, but in the depth of their character and the kindness of their heart. He understood that each individual possessed their own unique gifts and talents, and that true fulfillment could only be found by embracing one's authentic self. Marcus lived his life with purpose and integrity, leaving behind a legacy of compassion and wisdom that would endure long after he was gone. As the years passed, Marcus continued to walk his path with grace and humility, never seeking recognition or acclaim for his deeds. 
he found fulfillment in the knowledge that he had lived a life true to his principles and that he had made a positive impact on the lives of those around him. And so, Marcus's story serves as a timeless reminder of the power of embracing one's unique journey and strengths, and of the quiet strength that comes from letting go of comparisons and focusing on one's own growth and development. 5. Gossip A tense silence hung heavy in the air as Marcus entered the tavern. The usual boisterous chatter had been replaced by stolen glances and hushed whispers. He felt a prickle of unease crawl up his spine, the telltale sign of trouble brewing. It wasn't uncommon for rumours to swell through the close-knit village, but lately they seemed to be multiplying like weeds in a neglected garden. Marcus spotted his friend, Tiberius, hunched over a tankard of ale, his brow furrowed in a deep frown. Tiberius, a man known for his booming laugh and jovial spirit, appeared unusually subdued. Marcus pulled up a stool beside him, the creak of the wood, the only sound that dared to break the stifling silence. What troubles you, my friend? Marcus asked, his voice a steady anchor in the roiling sea of whispers. He knew Tiberius wouldn't lie, wouldn't engage in the petty gossip that seemed to be plaguing the village lately. Tiberius looked around furtively, then leaned in closer. There's a rumor swirling about you, Marcus, he confided, his voice barely above a whisper. They're saying dot 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 well, they're saying things about your business dealings with that new merchant from the south. Marcus felt a flicker of irritation. He had been wary of the merchant at first, a man with a smooth tongue and promises that seemed too good to be true. However, after careful negotiations and close scrutiny of the proposed deal, Marcus had concluded it was fair and beneficial to both parties. He knew his integrity was beyond reproach, but the power of whispers could be as destructive as a wildfire. Let them gossip, Marcus said with a wry smile, pushing away a plate of stale bread that had been left on the table. Their words hold no power over me if my actions are just. The truth has a way of revealing itself, even if it takes time. He believed in the power of clear communication. If anyone had concerns about the merchant or the deal, he was more than willing to discuss them openly and honestly. However, he wouldn't waste his breath trying to silence rumors. His energy was better spent focusing on his work and building trust through his actions. The next day, Marcus sought out the village elder, a wise woman known for her calm demeanor and sharp mind. He laid out the details of the merchant deal, his voice clear and unwavering. The elder listened intently, her eyes reflecting the years of experience etched into her face. When Marcus finished, she nodded slowly. Gossip thrives in the shadows, Marcus, she said, her voice a gentle rasp. Shine a light of truth on it, and it will dissipate like morning mist. She offered him a small, knowing smile. Focus on your work, on building trust through your actions. The truth will speak for itself in due time. Marcus left the elder's hut with a newfound sense of purpose. He wouldn't let the whispers define him. He would continue to conduct his business honestly with integrity as his guiding star. And through his consistent actions, he would demonstrate the true measure of his character, proving that whispers were nothing more than fleeting shadows compared to the steady light of truth. 6. Regret The cobbled streets of Ephesus thrummed with the chaotic symphony of a bustling marketplace. Sophia, a woman whose calm presence seemed a stark contrast to the surrounding frenzy, navigated the throngs with a measured gait and an unbothered gaze. Unlike the harried merchants hawking their wares or the frantic shoppers jostling for the best price, Sophia moved with a quiet purpose, a testament to the stoic philosophy that guided her life. 
life for Sophia hadn't been a gentle breeze. There were storms, of course, the sting of loss, the bitter taste of betrayal, the pang of opportunities missed. These experiences could have easily unraveled her, leaving her a tangled mess of regret. But Sophia, a dedicated student of Stoicism, had learned the art of letting go. She understood, with a clarity that surprised even some of her closest friends, that dwelling on the past served no purpose but to stagnate the present. Instead, she viewed these past mistakes as lessons etched in stone, permanent reminders to navigate future paths with a steadier hand. This philosophy wasn't a magic shield that warded off life's inevitable blows. It was more like a well-worn cloak, offering comfort and a sense of control of a world that often felt unpredictable. Friends and neighbors, burdened by the weight of past choices, often sought her counsel. Sophia wouldn't offer empty platitudes or sugarcoat the truth. She understood the human tendency to ruminate on what-ifs and should-haves, the way regret could twist like a viper in the gut. But with a gentle firmness, she'd guide them towards the present, the only fertile ground for change. Focus on what you can control, she'd say, her voice a soothing bomb. Your actions, your reactions, your thoughts. The past is a closed door, the future an unwritten scroll. It's the present moment that holds the key to shaping your destiny. As the fiery hues of sunset bled across the sky, casting long shadows across the marketplace stalls, Sophia paused for a moment of quiet reflection. Regret, she mused, wasn't a monstrous beast to be slain, but a natural byproduct of living a full life. By acknowledging her missteps and learning from them, she built a resilience that allowed her to face the inevitable storms with a quiet strength. Hers wasn't just a journey of self-discovery, but a testament to the human spirit's ability to find peace amidst the chaos. Sophia didn't preach from a soapbox or wear her stoicism like a badge of honor. But her quiet example, her unwavering commitment to living a life guided by reason and virtue, resonated with those around her. In a city where anxieties ran high and tempers flared easily, Sophia became a beacon of calm, a living testament to the power of finding contentment in the present moment and making peace with the past. Her quiet strength, a testament to the wisdom she gleaned from Stoicism, became a source of inspiration for those struggling to find their own path through the bustling marketplace of life. 7. Worrying about the future. The dessert wind, an unrelenting adversary, whipped grains of sand against Louisa's rugged face as she surveyed her caravan. Twenty camels, their backs burdened with exotic silks and aromatic spices, shifted restlessly in the waning light. Tomorrow, they would venture into the dreaded empty quarter, a vast expanse of unforgiving terrain, renowned for its scorching temperatures, sudden sandstorms that devoured entire caravans, and the ever-looming menace of banditry. Fear, a cold serpent, coiled tighter in Louise's stomach with each gust of wind. Though no stranger to desert travel, the harsh landscapes Louisa had traversed had etched deep creases into her weathered countenance, mirroring the unyielding dunes. Yet, this time, whispers of peril seemed to resound louder than the howling winds. Tales of an especially brutal sandstorm season lingered in the air, casting a pall over the customary pre-departure camaraderie by the crackling fire. As the men drew closer for warmth, the dancing flames cast long, flickering shadows that mirrored the unnies in their eyes. Louisa, known for her stoic wisdom and steady resolve, sensed it was time to confront the looming spectre of uncertainty. She did not waste breath lamenting the horrors that might await in the desert's depths. Such musings would not fill a single water skin. Instead, 
She spoke of the here and now, of meticulous final preparations, inspecting the camel's sturdy hooves for signs of wear, ensuring the water stores were secure and readily accessible, and honing their blades against any potential threat. Her voice, though firm, bore a hint of empathy, acknowledging the trepidation gnawing at them all. A wry smile creased the time-worn visage of Ahmed, Louisa's most seasoned guide. Fear, like a sandstorm, Louisa, he rasped, his voice a testament two years spent grappling with the desert's caprices. You cannot halt its advance, but you can learn to navigate through its fury. Louisa nodded, a silent acknowledgement glinting in her eyes. She understood. Fear was a natural companion, as inseparable as the desert winds. Yet, by channeling it into methodical preparation, heightened vigilance, and unyielding determination, they could transform it from a paralyzing force into a potent ally. With the dawn of the following day, beneath a boundless azure sky, the caravan commenced its odyssey. There were no grandiose farewells, no ostentatious displays of bravado. Instead, a resolute determination permeated the air, a tacit understanding shared among men who had weathered the desert's wrath before. They were not blind to the perils that lurked ahead, but neither would they be consumed by them. Unified by the shared wisdom of the desert and the indomitable spirit of those who had learned to dance with fear, they ventured forth. The road ahead would be arduous, but they were prepared, their hearts, though not entirely free from trepidation, fortified by reason and the silent pacts they held with the relentless sands of the unforgiving desert. 8. Perfectionism And now, we will talk about Marcus, a young sculptor with fiery ambition, chipped away at a colossal block of Carrara marble. Sunlight filtering through the workshop window danced across his chisel, highlighting the relentless precision of his strokes. Each curve, each delicate detail, was meticulously carved, a testament to Marcus's relentless pursuit of perfection. His reputation as a prodigy preceded him, with whispers of his unparalleled skill rippling through the city. But within his focus gaze, a flicker of doubt flickered. His vision, a scene of unparalleled beauty, seemed perpetually out of reach, marred by the slightest imperfection. One afternoon, as Marcus meticulously sculpted a cascading wave, a jagged white line snaked across the marble's surface. Frustration, hot and immediate, flooded him. This wasn't just a flaw, it was a betrayal. How could he ever create a masterpiece with such a glaring imperfection? Despair threatened to engulf him, a familiar foe that whispered doubts about his talent. He recalled the mocking laughter of rivals who scoffed at his unwavering pursuit of flawlessness. Was this all a charade? Seeking solace, Marcus wandered through the bustling streets, the city's vibrant life a stark contrast to his internal turmoil. He found himself drawn to the forum, where an elderly stoic philosopher was delivering a lecture. With a heavy heart, Marcus sat down, captivated by the man's words. The philosopher spoke of embracing life's imperfections, of finding beauty in the cracks and crevices, the very things we try so desperately to erase. He spoke of focusing on the journey, the growth, the constant striving for improvement, rather than the unattainable ideal of perfection. As the lecture ended, the weight on Marcus's chest seemed to lighten. Returning to his workshop, Marcus no longer saw the crack as a failure, but as a challenge. He envisioned ways to incorporate it, to turn it into a unique detail that would add character to his creation. With renewed focus, he began to sculpt, each stroke infused with a newfound acceptance. The imperfection, once a symbol of inadequacy, became a reminder of his humanity a testament to the ongoing struggle for mastery. 
As the peace slowly revealed itself, Marcus found a sense of peace he hadn't felt before. When the sculpture was finally complete, it wasn't flawless, but it was undeniably breathtaking. The incorporated crack, a stark white vein against the cool marble, added a depth and dynamism that captivated viewers. It was a story carved in stone, a testament to the artist's journey and his acceptance of its imperfections. As accolades poured in, Marcus realized true mastery wasn't about achieving an impossible ideal, but about embracing the imperfections that made his art and him human. From that day on, his work reflected a newfound freedom, a celebration of the journey of creation, not just the destination of a flawless masterpiece. 9. Toxic Relationships In the bustling port city of Alexandria, Serena, a young scholar with a thirst for knowledge, found herself increasingly drawn to the alluring glow of the newly arrived crystal scrolls. These scrolls, unlike the time-worn parchments filled with ancient wisdom, offered a glimpse into the lives of faraway scholars, lives overflowing with groundbreaking discoveries and prestigious accolades. With each scroll Serena unfurled, a pang of dissatisfaction gnawed at her. Her own research, focused on the painstaking study of forgotten languages, felt slow and insignificant compared to the dazzling achievements displayed. One day, immersed in a particularly envy-inducing scroll, Serena felt a gentle hand on her shoulder. It was Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher her father often consulted. His weathered face, etched with lines of experience, held a kind curiosity. Serena, he began softly, what is it that troubles you? Serena, initially hesitant, poured out her newfound discontent fueled by the crystal scrolls. Marcus listened patiently, then spoke with the measured cadence of a seasoned teacher. Dear Serena, he said, these scrolls present only a sliver of truth, a carefully crafted image of academic triumph. They are like polished mirrors that reflect the final, glorious outcome, hiding the countless hours of toil and frustration that paved the way. He explained the essence of Stoicism, focusing on what you can control, your dedication, your discipline, your internal compass. Comparing your entire academic journey to another's carefully curated highlights is a path to despair, he said solemnly. True intellectual fulfillment comes from the pursuit of knowledge itself, from the joy of unraveling mysteries, and from the satisfaction of contributing your own unique perspective to the vast tapestry of human understanding. Serena pondered Marcus's words. She realized she had been neglecting her research, her focus stolen by the allure of external validation. Shamefaced, she put away the crystal scroll and returned to her desk. As she meticulously deciphered ancient texts, the forgotten thrill of discovery washed over her. The scratch of her stylus became a comforting rhythm, the scent of aged parchment a familiar friend. She found beauty in the intricacies of the languages she studied, the Rosetta Stone to forgotten civilizations. Days turned into months, and Serena's passion for scholarship reignited. She stopped mindlessly scrolling through crystal scrolls and focused on her research, delving deeper into forgotten knowledge. Her findings, imbued with a newfound depth and meticulous detail, garnered respect from her peers who appreciated the rigor and originality of her work. Serena realized that true satisfaction came from external validation but from the intrinsic joy of learning and the pursuit of knowledge. She continued her research, not to compete with the fleeting achievements on crystal scrolls, but to contribute her own unique voice to the symphony of human knowledge, one painstaking translation at a time. 10. Mindless Consumption 
Let's discover the story of Aurelius, a charioteer in ancient Rome, renowned for his skill and daring. Aurelius spent his days at the racetrack, the thunder of hooves and cheers of the crowd his constant companions. Yet, a disquiet lurked beneath his victories. Every triumph felt fleeting, overshadowed by the constant need for the next chariot, the next upgrade, the next edge over his rivals. His stable overflowed with gleaming, powerful steeds, yet annoying emptiness remained. One evening, weary from another grueling race, Aurelius found himself drawn to the quiet teachings of a stoic philosopher named Seneca. Hesitantly, he confided in Seneca, revealing the hollowness that accompanied his victories. Seneca listened with a gentle smile. Aurelius, he began, True mastery lies not in the accumulation of possessions, but in the mastery of your own spirit. These chariots, these horses, they are but tools. Look beyond them, to the purpose that drives you. He explained the stoic concept of focusing on what you can control, your discipline, your focus, your inner strength. Chasing ever faster steeds is a path to endless dissatisfaction, Seneca said. True fulfillment comes from honing your skills, from the thrill of the race itself, and from the pursuit of excellence within yourself. Aurelius's eyes widened. He realized his relentless pursuit of the newest chariot was a desperate attempt to fill a void within. Shamefaced, he began by selling the surplus horses, keeping only a select few he could truly connect with. He focused on training, not just the horses, but himself, his reflexes, his focus, his understanding of his steeds. Weeks turned into months, and a newfound joy filled Aurelius's races. He reveled in the harmonious dance between him and his horse, the wind whipping past as they pushed themselves to their limits. Victory still tasted sweet, but the journey itself held a deeper satisfaction. He found camaraderie with fellow charioteers, sharing techniques and stories under the setting sun. Aurelius's life transformed. He no longer saw the racetrack as a battlefield for acquiring the best. Instead, he embraced it as a space for honing his skills, connecting with his animals, and pushing the boundaries of his own potential. He understood that true satisfaction wasn't found in accumulating possessions, but in living a life of purpose and mastery, one focused breath and perfectly timed turns to time. 11. Pleasing Everyone You may already hear about the stoic story of Epictetus, a freed slave who rose to become a renowned philosopher. But have you heard of Lyra, a baker in bustling Pompeii? Her bakery, the Golden Oven, was famous for its delicate pastries and the warmth of its welcome. Yet, beneath the smiles Lyra served with her bread, a knot of anxiety tightened. Focused on pleasing everyone, she tailored her creations to every whim, extra sugar for the children, a denser loaf for the laborers, intricate decorations for the wealthy. The joy of baking had become a burden, her days a constant negotiation of desires. One evening, after a particularly exhausting day of reshaping loaves to please a picky customer, Lyra found herself drawn to the quiet lectures of Seneca, a stoic philosopher who often visited the city. With a heavy heart, she confessed her struggles, the constant pressure to please everyone leaving her feeling drained and inauthentic. Seneca listened patiently, then spoke with the wisdom of a seasoned observer. Lyra, he began, you cannot control the preferences of others, only the quality of your work and your own actions. You are a baker, and your creations should reflect not just their needs, but your skill and passion. Chasing approval is a recipe for exhaustion and a loss of your unique touch. He explained the stoic concept of arete, 
which encompassed not just excellence in craft, but also living virtuously. True fulfillment comes from creating with honesty and integrity, not from external validation, he urged. Lyra's eyes opened to a truth she'd been ignoring. She had become a chameleon, her baking a constant performance for different audiences. Shamefaced, she started by setting gentle boundaries, offering variations of existing recipes instead of complete overhauls. To her surprise, many customers appreciated her approach, finding a delicious familiarity alongside the subtle changes she incorporated. Weeks turned into months, and the golden oven hummed with a newfound energy. The rhythmic kneading of dough became a soothing melody, the scent of baking bread a familiar comfort. Lyra's creations, infused with her own signature touch, garnered praise not just for their taste, but for the artistry she poured into them. She discovered a sense of peace and confidence she hadn't known before. Lyra's life transformed. She no longer saw baking as a means to please everyone. Instead, she embraced it as a way to express her creativity, to share her love for the craft with each bite. She understood that true satisfaction came from external validation, but from the freedom to be herself, to bake with integrity and passion, one perfectly rise and loaf at a time. Now, eliminating these unwanted aspects doesn't require a dramatic overhaul or a public display of renunciation. It's a subtle revolution, a quiet conversation you have with yourself, a series of whispers that gradually turn into roars over time. It's about making small, consistent choices that ripple outwards, creating a life that feels more genuine and fulfilling with each passing day. Imagine waking up each morning with a renewed sense of purpose, the weight of mental clutter and emotional burdens lifted from your shoulders. Picture yourself surrounded by positive influences, friends, family, mentors who uplift and support you and by activities that spark genuine joy, that ignite a fire within you. This, my friends, is the transformative power of quiet elimination. Remember, this journey is your own personal expedition, a map waiting to be charted. There's no pre-written script, no one-size-fits-all approach. Listen to the whispers of your intuition, the yearnings of your soul, experiment, tweak, and adjust as you go. You might be surprised by the reserves of strength you discover when you let go of negativity or the wellspring of creativity that bursts forth when you stop comparing yourself to the meticulously curated highlight reels of others' lives. Embrace the newfound freedom that comes with prioritizing your well-being and focusing on what truly matters to you. Don't be afraid to shed the things that no longer serve you, to make space for the things that bring light and joy. Think of this path of quiet elimination as a race to some distant finish line mark perfection, but as a continuous journey of self-discovery and growth. It's about becoming the best version of yourself, one mindful choice at a time. Savor the small victories, the moments where you choose self-care over self-criticism or connection over mindless scrolling. Celebrate your progress, no matter how incremental it may seem. Trust that with each step you take, you're building a life that's uniquely yours, a life brimming with authenticity, purpose, and the quiet joy that comes from living with intention. So, take a deep breath, quiet the noise, and embark on this journey of quiet elimination. You deserve a life that feels truly good, from the inside out. It's a life where the whispers of your soul become your guiding light, leading you towards a place of peace, fulfillment, and quiet joy.